What is radioactive wastewater and why is it a problem? How does it affect the environment and human health? And what are the possible solutions to deal with it? Hello and welcome to Curiosity, where we explore fascinating and interesting topics about everything. Today, we are going to talk about the risks of radioactive wastewater release. Radioactive wastewater is water that contains radioactive substances, such as tritium, cesium, strontium, and iodine. These substances can be produced by various sources, such as nuclear power plants, medical facilities, industrial processes, and natural phenomena. Radioactive wastewater can pose a threat to the environment and human health if it is not properly treated and disposed of. One of the most controversial cases of radioactive wastewater release is the ongoing situation at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in Japan. As you may recall, this plant was severely damaged by an earthquake and a tsunami in 2011, resulting in a nuclear meltdown and a massive release of radiation. Since then, the plant operator, TEPCO, has been pumping water into the reactors to cool down the melted fuel rods. This water becomes contaminated with radioactive substances and is stored in more than 1,000 tanks at the site. However, the storage space is running out and Japan says it has no choice but to release the treated water into the Pacific Ocean. The plan is to gradually discharge more than a million tons of water over the next 30 years, starting from August 2023. The water has been filtered to remove most of the harmful radionuclides, except for tritium, which is difficult to separate from water. The water is also diluted to ensure that the tritium concentration is far below the safety standards set by international organizations. But not everyone agrees with this plan. Some neighboring countries, such as China and South Korea, have expressed strong opposition and concern over the potential impact of the release on the marine ecosystem and human health. They have also accused Japan of violating international law and being irresponsible. Some environmental groups and local fishermen have also protested against the release, fearing that it will damage their livelihoods and reputation. So, who is right? Is the release safe or dangerous? What does the science say? To answer these questions, we need to look at some facts and evidence from various sources. First of all, what is tritium and why is it so hard to remove from water? Tritium is a radioactive form of hydrogen that has two extra neutrons in its nucleus. It can be naturally produced by cosmic rays or artificially by nuclear reactions. Tritium can emit beta radiation, which is a type of low-energy radiation that can be stopped by a sheet of paper or human skin. Tritium can also combine with oxygen to form tritiated water, which is chemically identical to ordinary water. Because of this similarity, tritiated water can easily mix with other water molecules and cannot be separated by conventional methods, such as filtration or distillation. The only way to remove tritium from water is by using advanced technologies, such as electrolysis or catalytic exchange, which are very expensive and impractical for large-scale applications. Secondly, how harmful is tritium to living organisms? Tritium can enter the body through ingestion, inhalation, or absorption through the skin. Once inside, tritium can distribute throughout the body and replace some of the normal hydrogen atoms in biological molecules, such as DNA and proteins. This can cause damage to the cells and tissues by breaking chemical bonds or altering their functions. However, tritium has a very low radiotoxicity compared to other radionuclides. This means that it takes a very high dose of tritium to cause significant harm to living organisms. According to the World Health Organization, 
The limit for tritium in drinking water is 10,000 becquerels per liter, which is a measure of radioactivity. According to TEPCO and the International Atomic Energy Agency, the tritium concentration in the treated water from Fukushima is far below the WHO limit. The operational limit for the release is 1,500 becquerels per liter, which is six times lower than the WHO limit. The actual concentration in the first release was only 150 becquerels per liter, which is 66 times lower than the WHO limit. The IAEA also estimates that the radiation dose to the public from the release will be negligible. Thirdly, how does tritium behave in the environment? Tritium can be found in water all over the world, both naturally and artificially. The artificial sources of tritium include nuclear power plants, reprocessing facilities, research reactors, and medical applications. These sources can release tritium into the environment through routine operations or accidental leaks. However, Tritium does not accumulate or concentrate in the environment or in living organisms. Because tritium has a very short half-life of 12.3 years, which means that it decays and loses half of its radioactivity every 12.3 years. Tritium also has a very low affinity for biological molecules, which means that it does not bind strongly to them and can be easily replaced by normal hydrogen. Tritium also has a very high mobility in water, which means that it can quickly disperse and dilute in the ocean. Therefore, the environmental impact of tritium is minimal, especially when compared to other radionuclides that have longer half-lives, higher radiotoxicities, and higher affinities for biological molecules. For example, cesium-137, strontium-90, and iodine-131. These radionuclides can cause much more serious damage to the environment and human health if they are released into the ocean. Fortunately, these radionuclides have been mostly removed from the treated water from Fukushima by using advanced filtration systems. The remaining levels of these radionuclides are also carefully monitored to ensure compliance with the safety standards set by the Japanese government and the IAEA. Fourthly, what are the possible solutions to deal with radioactive wastewater? There are several options to deal with radioactive wastewater, but each one has its own advantages and disadvantages. Some of the options are as follows. Release into the ocean. This is the option chosen by Japan for the treated water from Fukushima. This option is supported by many experts and international organizations as safe and feasible. However, this option also faces strong opposition and criticism from some countries and groups as risky and irresponsible. Release into the atmosphere. This option involves evaporating or vaporizing the water and releasing it into the air. This option can reduce the volume of water and avoid direct contact with marine life. However, this option also poses risks of spreading radioactive substances over a wider area and affecting terrestrial ecosystems and human health. Storage on land. This option involves storing the water in tanks or containers on land or underground. This option can avoid releasing radioactive substances into the environment and allow more time for decay or treatment. However, this option also requires a lot of space and resources and poses risks of leakage or damage from natural disasters or human errors. Injection into deep geological formations. This option involves injecting the water into deep wells or boreholes below the surface. This option can isolate radioactive substances from the biosphere and prevent their migration or exposure. However, this option also requires a lot of technical expertise and equipment and poses risks of contamination or instability of groundwater or rock formations. 
transmutation or incineration. This option involves changing or destroying radioactive substances by using nuclear reactions or high temperatures. This option can reduce or eliminate radioactivity and volume of waste. However, this option also requires a lot of advanced technology and energy and poses risks of generating secondary waste or emissions. As you can see, there is no perfect solution to deal with radioactive wastewater. Each option has its own pros and cons and requires careful evaluation and implementation. The best solution may depend on various factors, such as the type and amount of radioactive substances, the availability and cost of technology and resources, the environmental and social impacts, and the legal and ethical implications. In conclusion, we have learned about the risks of radioactive wastewater release. We have discussed what radioactive wastewater is and why it is a problem, how it affects the environment and human health, what are the possible solutions to deal with it, and what are the facts and evidence from various sources. That's all for today's episode. Thank you for watching Curiosity. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content like this. And don't forget to share your thoughts and questions in the comments below. Until next time, stay curious.